Hi, I'm Dr. De Bruin, and this video is a quick walkthrough of how to answer this calorimetry question from the energetics topic of AS level chemistry. This calorimetry question begins by asking you to write a definition. Now, these definitions are easy marks, so get them on a flashcard and just learn them. So our definition for the standard enthalpy of combustion is going to start off by saying that it is the enthalpy change or the heat energy change. You can't just say energy on its own. So it's the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance, because this is a standard enthalpy change, so it needs to be one mole, when one mole of that substance burns completely in oxygen. We don't have standard enthalpy changes for incomplete combustion. And then this last bit is the bit that tends to trip people up. So we need to say that we have all reactants and products in their standard states. So it's not enough to just say with everything in its standard states, you need to be specifying reactants and products. And then it's in their standard states, not happening under standard conditions, which is something we very often see people writing. So under standard conditions would be happening at a set temperature, happening at 298 Kelvin. But if you're setting fire to something, the temperature is not going to stay at 298 Kelvin. So it's not standard conditions, but the reactants and products are in their standard states. Then for the second part of this question, we have a really standard calorimetry calculation. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is to write down the equation Q equals MC delta T. And that on its own is often worth a mark, which is quite generous and unusual for AQA. Now, when we say M, this is the M, the mass of the water that's being heated. Very often students get confused and they'll use the mass of the fuel that is being burned. But remember, what we're doing is figuring out how much energy has gone into that water. So it's the mass of the water we want and also the specific heat capacity of the water. And that is going to be given to you in the question. I just didn't this time for some reason. And the temperature change you're going to need to work out yourself from the numbers in the question. So the temperature rose from 20.8 to 34.1. That's a temperature change of 13.3 degrees C. And you don't need to do any conversions to Kelvin because the size of a Kelvin and the size of a degree Celsius are the same as each other. So the temperature change will be the same regardless of which units you're working in. So once I know all of that, I can work out a value for Q, which is going to be 6,671.28 joules. I am not going to round that value. Remember, we're never going to round until we get to our final answer. So that's my value for the energy change, the amount of energy that has been absorbed by the water in this process. And now I need to work out delta H. So this is going to be a negative value for Q in kilojoules divided by the number of moles. So my number of moles I can work out by taking the mass this time of the fuel and dividing it by the MR. So here that's going to be 0.522 divided by the relative formula mass of ethanol. And that gives me a number of moles of 0.01347826.1. And again, I am not going to round that value. Make sure that you're either writing down your full calculator display or using the answer button. So I'm going to take um, my... Uh, my value for Q and I'm going to put that into kilojoules so divide it by a thousand and then divide it by the number of moles I've just calculated. The reason that it's going to be a negative value is that um, combustion is always exothermic and so I'm going to get a value of minus 587.89057 um, kilojoules per mole and then I need to round this to an appropriate number of significant figures so this time it's going to be three significant figures because my masses in the question and also my temperatures in the question are given to three significant figures. Finally, I need to give two reasons why this experimental value is going to be less exothermic. In other words, it has a smaller magnitude compared to a value that has been calculated using enthalpies of formation. So the first one is that we're going to have heat losses to the surroundings. So this is why when you do an experiment like this, you're going to try and insulate it. You might include a lid, you might wrap insulation around it. And then the second reason is that the combustion probably isn't complete. So if we have some incomplete combustion, then that's much less efficient. It releases less energy and therefore we're going to have a less exothermic value. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that you are finding these walkthroughs of A-level chemistry exam questions useful as part of your revision. If you are, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.